Hi, my name is Melisa. I am an ESL teacher and today I wanted to talk about how to use the chalkboard and whiteboard properly. So one key to using the whiteboard and chalkboard is when you say a sentence and you know that not every student knows what the sentence is, you should write it on the board. Okay? So if you're teaching students vocabulary like man, woman, toddler, infant, child, and you're using a book like the, um, say you're using Oxford Picture Dictionary and you have the words in the book with pictures, don't put the words on the board unless you want to explain something about them. Why? Because they're already in their book. You don't have to write the book on the board. I once had a teacher who would write everything in the book on the board. It was very um, boring. So don't do that because it's unnecessary. Um, if all you're writing on the board is the book, then don't do it. Um, if you're going to write something extra though, say, say you're teaching the word toddler and you want to help them with pronunciation, then you can write the word toddler on the board and underline Todd and then underline ler and have them practice the parts toddler, toddler, toddler. That is a useful way of using the board because you want to explain pronunciation. Or maybe you want to explain what the age is for each of the words and the age is not next to the words in the book. Then you can put the, name, the word on the board toddler and you can write, oh, a toddler is three months to how many months old, okay? And that is also a good use of the board, all right? In addition, if you're teaching and you say a sentence that's important and you want your students to learn it, write it on the board, okay? especially if not all your students understand what the sentence is. If you're teaching a beginner class, it's probably true that not every student understands what you just said. So say you, say you have a sentence like, um, senior citizens are usually over 65 or over 62. You should write that sentence on the board, senior citizens are usually over 62 or over 65. Right? And then have the students say it with you, have them write it down, and then they can understand what you're saying. Now it depends on their level of your class, but if you're doing beginners, then you should write that sentence on the board. If you're doing more advanced students, you don't have to write every sentence, but you're going to write words that they might be unfamiliar with on the board if you use them. When I teach class, especially for beginners, I listen to almost everything I say. And if I say something that I think um, they might not understand, I write it on the board and I explain it to the students. So the board is very useful, okay? But don't write things that they don't need to know. Um, don't write things that are in their book already, all right? Don't write extra things that they don't need to know. <laughs> so today I had a teacher, the question was, um, do you have any children and how old are they? Which is a very good question to teach the students especially since the words were toddler, child, baby, and, and all that kind of thing. But the answer he wrote on the board was, I have, let's see, uh, yes, I have two children. They are, they are nine years old. They are twins. Now, I mean, I understand. He was, I guess he was trying to make it easier, just one age. But to say that they are twins is complicated because twins is more complicated. Um, if the students all know what twins are, then that's okay, but if you have beginner students and they don't all know what twins are, don't write their twins. Uh, stay as basic as you can. So instead of saying, yes, I have two children, they are nine years old, you can say, yes, I have two children, one is eight and one is seven or something, because that's more typical. It's a more typical way of saying it. You have two children, one is six and one is ten or something like that. And actually, in that class, one of the students was asking me, what? Two children, but they're nine years old. They're the same age. I don't understand. Because it, you know, and then there's like, oh, they're twins. And she's like, oh. But this is like a little too complicated. <laughs> and so the board actually helps limit you from writing things that are not relevant. Because this, the actual, the, the volunteer, when he was teaching, he didn't actually even want the students to repeat that they're twin sense because it was unrelated. <laughs> um, but it, it became kind of confusing. So try not to write, the board actually helps you stay focused and not put in too many hard words 
Because if you say hard words in class and you have to write them on the board explain them, it's going to take you a long time and you're going to realize, why did I say that word in the first place? So the board is really good. It limits what you say in class and you're only going to write down what's important. It's going to help you limit what you say. Okay, because you're going to try to write down what you say if, if it's not already in the book. And this is because it helps students with their listening, they're going to hear you and some are not going to understand. You're going to write on the board, you're going to write it down, they're going to learn it, and then you're going to say it many times and they're finally going to understand it. Um, I do that with students, very new students in beginner class. Sometimes they come in, they don't understand, do you understand that question? So I spend a lot of time on that question because I ask students that question all the time. Do you understand? Do you understand? And if they don't understand that question, it's very difficult for me to uh, interact with the students. So sometimes I'll spend a good portion of the class just explaining what do you understand means. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. I hope that um, you can use this and it'll help you use a chalkboard or a blackboard or a whiteboard effectively. If you have any other comments or suggestions, please leave them on this post. I would love to hear them. I am always learning new things too and uh, please teach me as well. Thank you so much for visiting ESL Teacher. If you want to know how to support the blog, check out the page Support ESL Teacher. Have a great day.